Hey everybody, Scott Carlson here with my partner, Rylan Russell, and uh, welcome to this week's edition of Ask Pastor, Pastor Scott. Uh, this last Sunday, we continued the series, Who is Jesus? And uh, we looked at uh, uh, the John uh, passage where Jesus said that he was the light of the world. Uh, we talked about uh, how Jesus is the great I am, uh, equated back to uh, Exodus 3. Uh, of when uh, God told Moses uh, to tell Pharaoh that I am sent you. Uh, we also talked uh, on this last Sunday about how Jesus is uh, the Messiah and how he is the Savior. Of course, what we're trying to do on Sunday mornings is answer the question, who is Jesus according to the Scripture? Uh, everybody has an opinion of that Jesus was a good man or a prophet or you know, maybe somebody that was sent from God, but surely not the eternal God, not God in the flesh when he walked in this earth. And so that's some of the questions that we've been answering. And so in addition to that, we're also answering some questions that you've been sending in. And uh, we're going to get to a couple of those here in, in just a moment. So uh, all right, what you got, Rylan? You ready to do this? I'm ready, buddy. All right, this is uh, week two of Ask Pastor Scott. <laughs> All right, so here we go again. All right, I'm ready. All right, so question one comes f to us from Tufu. He says, what about Calvinism? If God ultimately chooses us to be saved, then where does free will come in? Uh, great question, Tufu. And of course, on the screen, we had to make it a little bit smaller. But his question went on a little bit deeper than that, and I, I need to explain that before I, before I give my answer, because one of the, the questions that Tufu also answered is, you know, how does all that work together, free will and election, and, and how does a person know that they're saved? And, and are we going to have to wait till we get to the very end and, and listen to uh, uh, God read out the names that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life? And, uh, and so that was, those were some of the questions that he asked as well. And so to answer this, let me go to the end question first, the, the last part, because I, I think the, that gives us a, a better foundation. One of the first verses that I memorized when I became a follower of Christ nearly 38 years ago, Rylan, how, how old are you? 32. Yeah. No, 33. So, 33. Let's get it straight. <laughs> the, the year Jesus laid down his life. That's right. right. There we go. And so, so right after I became a believer, um, my youth pastor taught me to memorize scripture. And I'm thankful that he did because one of the first scriptures that I memorized was 1 John 5.13 that says this, These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you might know you have eternal life. And so to answer the last part of that question, yes, I, I believe it's incredibly possible uh, to know whether your name is already written in the Lamb's Book of Life because the, the Scripture says that you can know. Um, one of my, my favorite um, uh, books in the Bible is the Book of Romans. And the Book of Romans, of course, you know, gives us great encouragement and, and, and great hope about you know, how we come to Christ. I think it was the Apostle Paul himself that said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And a few verses after that, he says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Of course, I'm also reminded of that John passage, John 1, 12, where it says, but as many as received them or him, to them God gave the right to become the children of God. And so, so I think the scripture is abundantly clear. You can know for certain uh, whether you will spend an eternity with, in heaven with the Lord. And when I was 16 years old, I, I gave my life to Christ. I repented of my sin. I, I asked Jesus to, to come in my life. And I, I basically gave my life to him. And, and I believe what happened that day uh, was that I received a born-again experience. God changed me from, from the inside out. Now, some would say that I was chosen, uh, that I, I didn't choose God. And I would agree with that. I think at that particular moment in my life, God opened my mind to him and opened my heart to him, or he opened my, my mind to him, and, and then I re received him 
as my Savior. And so the second part of your question, Tufu, I think it's, it's very clear. You can know, you know, uh, how, how do I know for certain that I'm going to heaven? Well, God came in my life and he changed me, as the scripture teaches us. When I sin, uh, I'm convicted. This last Sunday, I, I mentioned in one of my, in my sermon that, that when a Christian sins, they, they become miserable inside. Why? Because they're grieving the Holy Spirit that is inside of, uh, of them. And, and um, according to the scripture, you know, I've, I've confessed my sin to him, I've received him, I've repented, um, and, and he guides me every day. Now, getting back to the first part of your question, you know, how does election fit into this? How does free will fit into this? You know, I've got to tell you, uh, I have studied my entire adult life on, on these particular issues. And, and some of my best friends that I have in ministry uh, were divided on, on this subject. Um, some hold to what, what is called the five points of Calvinism. Um, uh, and some hold to what... Others believe the five points of Arminianism. Entire conventions have been split. Matter of fact, the convention that I serve in, in the Southern Baptist Convention, that seems to be the, the hot topic of, of argument uh, right now about, you know, are you a Calvinist or are you an Arminianist? I actually received a phone call this week, believe it or not, where somebody asked me where our church stood in the area of, of Calvinism. And, and I told them this. I said, I consider myself to be a Calvinist. Now think about that for a moment. Uh, Calvinist means, I guess, part Calvinist, part Arminius. Now, before some of my Calvinistic friends get too upset at me, you know, some of you have been telling me for the last 30 years that's impossible. You, you, you can't be a Calvinist. Well, let me answer it this way. I'm either a two-point Calvinist or an eight-point Calvinist. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I know it makes sense. Matter, matter of fact, the only people that really understand what I just said are people that have studied this for years. And, and, and I have to tell you, folks, this is not an issue to be divided in. There are what, what's called Orthodox Christianity of, of people on both sides of this issue that love Jesus. They're born again. They love the Scripture. We just simply disagree on some terms. And, and again, I've got brothers and sisters that are on both sides of this issue. And, and uh, you know, I just I defer to my good friend, uh, um, Dr. Craig Blomberg, professor out in, in Denver Seminary, that actually I heard him coin that he was a Calvinist, meaning that I, I do believe in total depravity. I do believe in, in, uh, uh, in perseverance of the saints. The three middle ones, you know, that deal with unconditional election, that deal with uh, limited atonement, that, mm -hmm. that deal with irresistible grace, I'll tell you, I, I tend to believe those things, but I also believe in free will. I also believe that the blood is available to everyone. And, and I also believe that, that a person can resist the free gift of God. And, and you say, well, how, how can you believe opposites? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, the scripture that I continue to go back to is Isaiah 55. I believe it's verses 8 and 9, where it says that, that God is speaking to us when he says, my ways are so much higher than your ways, and my thoughts are above your thoughts. And as high as the heavens are above the, the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts above yours. And, and the best thing that I can say to people that are debating this whole issue about whether God chose us or whether, whether we you know, responded to that grace or not is, you know, one of these days, we're going to have that figured out. In the meantime, what do we need to do? We need to tell people about Christ. Right. Yeah. We, we need to bring glory to Him. We, we need to teach the Scriptures. And, and we need to understand there's going to be some points of Scripture that I think are great tensions that pull against each other that look to be opposite, but, but in God's eyes they're not because God understands all things. Now, this doesn't mean that I personally don't have a stance. I have a great stance in, in this issue. But I think at the end of the day, I think we need to understand that election is true. It is in it is in the Word of God, but I don't think you can ignore scriptures that that says God loved the entire world, and I don't think you can ignore the scriptures that say uh, that uh, that it is you know what Peter said that that it is the desire of God that no one perish, but all come to repentance. And I know there are people on both sides that do a lot of gymnastics to try to prove their scripture above the other. But, but this is one of those things that I leave in the, in the hands of God. 
and uh, one of these days we'll have this figured out. Now, I probably now upset everybody because I didn't answer it the way you wanted. But, uh, but to answer Tufu's question, you know, election is a mystery of God. Salvation is a mystery of God. I know what the Scripture says we need to do, and I know what the Scripture says that, that God is doing. And somehow we're going to have to leave that in His hands. So there you go. Well, Scott, we just made you answer a very big question big in about one. maybe three minutes. So, yeah. you, you know, we are live right now on Facebook on Wednesday night, and mm-hmm. thank you for joining us. And we want this to be a conversation. Right. You know, I mean, Scott definitely is, is doing his very best to give you his thoughtful and studied opinion. But comment below on, you know, maybe what your opinion is of these things or maybe another follow-up question that you have. And you can always send those questions to us at questions at cbcowasso.org. Now, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next and question unless do, you want to say something else. Yeah, before we do that, Ryan, I, I do want to address the church on this because, again, I know churches that have been split over this issue. And, and it shouldn't be. We need to extend grace to our brothers that we disagree on, on certain issues. Now, listen, I'm all about let's die on a mountain or on a hill for the Word of God. You know, that the Word is the inspired Word of God. And I, I think there are certain things that we should, we should be willing to die for, of who Jesus Christ is. You know, of, of, of I mean, this whole series that we're doing about who is Jesus but, but when it comes to things like this, Calvinism versus Arminianism, or if you're like me, a Calvinist somewhere in between, we've got to show grace to each other because the world is looking in. I mean, some people are listening to this very, very live Facebook thing. Say, oh, there they go again. Christians arguing, you know, splitting over issues. And this is not one to be split over. It's one to embrace our brother and let's pay attention to the essentials that we can hold together to be true. That's good. Yeah, I like that. All right. All right, you ready to go for number two? I'm ready. All right, this is our final question for tonight because these are some big ones. Yep. And this question actually came from Ted on Facebook. He says, Why would God, the very embodiment of love, let someone he loves suffer for all eternity when he doesn't have to? This is a question that's been asked for as long as I've been alive and probably, you know, ever since uh, Christianity has been around. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what's, uh, what do we do with that? You know, I think this is actually the tougher question because, you know, the Bible makes it incredibly clear that God is love. I mean, that's, that's what John tells us in, in his gospel and also in his epistle. And, uh, you know, the best way that I know how to try to answer this is basically to tell you um, I don't know. <laughs> but in saying I don't know, I attempt to manage my own thought process about how much I love my children and now I'm a grandparent, how much I love my, my grandkids. And, and I, I can't imagine more love in my heart for them. And, and yet, um, would I give them up for a group of people that, you know, some were good people and some were not so good people? And the truth is, no one really is good. But, but I love them with all of my heart, and I can't imagine giving them up to, to you know, for death for someone else. But... I attempt to try to imagine how much God loves us. I mean, really, to me, the bigger question is not how could God allow someone to go to to hell even though he loves them. Why would God allow his own son to die on the cross for us? To me, that seems to be a bigger question. But but I do believe that God loves everyone. Uh, Again, kind of going back to that first question, you know, about, you know, is the blood available to everyone Mm -hmm. and, and stuff. And and uh, but you know this is this is the best way I know how to answer it. I'm an inerrantist, meaning I, I believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. Uh, I, I believe everything that is in the Bible is there for a reason. Therefore, I, I believe that God is love. I believe that 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 He loves us. I believe that He sent His Son to die on the cross for us. That Jesus was buried on the third day. He rose again. I believe that He walked amongst men for forty days, and I believe He ascended to the right hand of the Father. Uh, and I believe that one day He's coming back for us. But if I believe that, because the Bible teaches it, I also believe that there is a Satan or a devil, and his name is Lucifer. I believe that there's evil in the world. I, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. I, I believe that there's a place called hell, uh, and I believe that, that, that he originally made hell not for, for, for people, but he made it for Satan and all of the angels that fell from heaven. But yet... The scripture also teaches us that those who reject the free gift of eternal life that God gives 
we'll spend an eternity in separation from God. And, you know, we can talk, Ryan, and we can talk about, you know, hell and damnation and, and all that stuff, but I don't know of anything being worse off than being separated from the presence and the holiness of God. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I believe that God is love, but I also believe that he's God of justice. And, and I believe that he will give every man and woman and boy and girl at least one opportunity, if not many opportunities, to receive that grace. And really, what we ought to be doing, in my opinion, instead of worrying about things that we don't have any control over, we ought to be more concerned about telling those lost individuals that Jesus loves them. Because I believe that I also will be accountable to God for you know, how I share the word and how I share the gospel. Again, one of those tough questions that I don't fully, I can't fully comprehend, but by faith I'm compelled to tell people about the love of Jesus. Again, whether you think it's election and limited atonement or whether you believe in free will and, and that, we, we need to tell people because God is worthy of us sharing him. Mm. I, last thing I say on this, God's a good God. He's a fair God. He's a just God. And uh, but he's also righteous. And, uh, and, and we need to do everything we can you know, to bring glory to him and to tell people of his grace and of his plan. So there you go. Man, I want to have an altar call right now. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> so why are we doing these, you know, weekly Ask Pastor Scotts? Um, I just want to tell you guys that the reason we're doing these is that we don't have this thing figured out, right. that nobody does. And I'm going to say this every time because, you know, we're, we're hearing his thoughts and what God has shown him. And thank you for sharing and studying these things because we all have these kinds of questions. But we want to just have a conversation, and that, that's what we talk about at Central, being real, being authentic. And, you know, we're all screwed up, we're all messed up, and thank God that he loves us in right. spite of it. So, you know, if you have a question that you want um, Scott to, to maybe answer in the future, we have quite a few in the bank right now <laughs> um, that we're going to be getting to. So just send those to us. You can comment below right here on this video, or just send it to questions at cbcowasso.org. And we'd love to just, you know, have a conversation about it. So we want to see you this Sunday for our third week of our series, right. Who is Jesus? And this week's topic is I am... I am the door and I am the good shepherd. We're going to look at those two things together. All right. Well, we'll see you next time, next week, about this time, on next week's Ask Pastor Scott. <laughs>